Good afternoon. Welcome to Sean Christie Political Prisoner News. I'm Craig Christie, and we're up here on uh, the mountain in McAdoo here on a beautiful afternoon, beautiful clear sky. Um, probably going to be one of our biggest broadcasts ever today. Uh, a couple things real quick. Uh, I just want to give you, um, Sean has a detention hearing uh, for his federal charges at the federal courthouse in Scranton on Thursday. I believe that's 9 o'clock. And uh, the Mayor Stephen Holly trial for the alleged assault that Sean made on the mayor. Haha. Uh, that's actually starting on the 28th at 9 a.m. this month, next Monday. So if you get a chance, stop into either one of those venues. Uh, show some support for Sean. Show some love. Um, big announcement today. This is probably... I would say the biggest announcement we've made since we restarted uh, Sean Christie Political Prisoner News since the uh, feds made us take it down in 2014. Uh, well, you know that uh, that little incident with Mayor Holly and McAdoo back uh, March uh, 15, 2017, uh, where the police are saying he allegedly attacked the mayor. Well, now it's coming out the truth. Really, that whole incident was a fugitive task force. Uh, they, they actually were coming out to arrest Sean. Two days before the incident with Mayor Holly in 2017 on uh, March 15th, uh, March 13th, he, Sean got in a little wrangle with a, uh, um, the uh, Berkheimer's tax collectors. They were saying he uh, owed taxes and he didn't. And he had to prove for two years he'd been writing letters. And they had been destroying his life, reporting him to credit agencies, everything else, yada, yada. You know, you know how that rolls. So what happened was he got a little ornery on the phone. He, uh, he made a couple threats, uh, basically told them he was going to shoot somebody and blow the place up. And that was actually March 13th. That was in Northampton County, uh, Berkheimer's uh, tax collections uh, down in Bangor, PA. That's right, Bangor, PA, uh, not Bangor, Maine. And that's in Northampton County. Well, the interesting thing was uh, the officer in charge of that, Melissa Sylvester from the Bangor Police Force, actually did file a, a criminal complaint against Sean. And actually, there was a arrest warrant put out for him on March 13th, 2017, two days before the Holly incident. Here's what happened. Okay. They had basically, because there was a bomb threat and gun threat involved in that, um, basically, they had asked for assistance for the arrest. Um, and since it was out of their county, too. So, apparently, they were going to get assistance from the U.S. Marshals out of Allentown. Um, the guy in charge would, that day would have been Nick Hanovic. And also the ATF out of Reading. Okay. Um, basically they came out in their same formations as always, uh, one Dodge Charger, two vans and a pickup truck. And that was actually, they came out to arrest Sean two days later after the, after the threats, um, here in McAdoo, but we had had a blizzard and overnight we just got swamped with snow. But you know, the funny thing was, the funny thing was the rest of the town got plowed. Except our little alley and our adjacent streets around here didn't get plowed. So we were really worried. There was a lot of people trapped. People couldn't get to work. Well, on the orders of U.S. Marshal Nick Hanavig, they had told the McAdoo Borough and the McAdoo Police not to plow the roads. Because they wanted to make sure that Sean couldn't take off in Mom's car or we didn't go out somewhere um, because they had to get the logistics in uh, to do the raid on the home. Now, they didn't need a warrant at the time because I was still on U.S. probation for all the Alaska stuff. So I was on federal probation. So they didn't need a warrant to come in. They could have came in on that. Okay, they didn't need a search warrant. They had an arrest warrant. Okay, it was put out, like I said, by uh, by uh, the Bangor, Bangor police put out the, the criminal complaint on uh, March 13th. And it was signed off on John Morganelli, D.A. John Morganelli's office signed off on it same day. Well, this is what happened. See, this wasn't just an incident about going up and seeing about the snow being plowed, 
okay? This was an incident, okay, that got real out of hand because, once again, federal assistants like the U.S. Marshals and the ATF tend to screw everything up, okay? And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you a lot of proof of this after I get done explaining. But that whole thing, like I said, they pretty much left us unplowed. So it would be easier to come out and get Sean. I really think what they were waiting for was, I think they were waiting for Sean actually to leave here, maybe go hiking or something through the snow like he always does. And then they'd have two SUVs and, and a Dodge Black Charger. Remember the Black Dodge Charger in the Holly video at the Burrow Building? U.S. Marshals, Nick Hanovic, okay? So that was the real game, okay? It was really to arrest him for what happened in Bangor in Northampton County, okay? It had nothing, nothing to do with uh, actually the Holly incident or anything like that. Now, why did they have to cover this up? <laughs> well, think about it. McAdoo Mayor Stephen Holly and McAdoo Police Officers Frederick J. Lahowski and Joe David were working with the feds. They were working with U.S. Marshals at the time. This was a sting operation, but it went wrong. They didn't have the logistics yet to come out here when Sean had left to go complain about the snow being plowed. And they still didn't have the logistics yet when Sean got up there. So they didn't really want to do anything. And that's why Sean walked out of there without getting arrested, because the two, the two SUVs and the pickup truck weren't here yet. Only Nick Canovig was here. And this has been the mystery all along of what really happened out here. So now we can understand why Sean came home and why later on they surrounded the house and Sean peaceably came out. And uh, this whole thing, this whole hype in the standard speaker that Officer Lahowski gave about this incredible thing. We got the road departments from, from Klein and we got the police from Rush and the state police and all this. Now this whole thing was planned days ahead. No, no miracles, no great police work, no, no great work. They were, and you want to know why there's missing footage in the video? Because that was the police driving around. That was Officer Lahowski and Joe David. They were told to make sure to keep driving around in case Sean left that parking lot to keep an eye on where he was going. They had an eye on him the whole day. You can see when he's walking up to, to the borough building, Holly's on his cell phone. Why is Holly on his cell phone? He's talking to the duty phone. He's talking to Officer Lahowski. This whole thing was laid out two days before. It was, it, was, it was an arrest for the Bangor police in Northampton County. And they were getting assistance from the U.S. Marshals. And they were getting assistance from the ATF. And here, I'm going to show you a little proof on this here, okay? Because a lot of people are going to say, no, 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 no. Could never happen. Could never happen. No. Let me show you some proof on this here. And I hope I aim this right. So if I don't, I'm going to post it later on the comments. But here you go. Okay. This is an NCIC that was run on Sean. Okay. That was run the day of the Bangor incident in Northampton County. Two days before the Mayor Howie incident here in McAdoo. Okay. That's very interesting. Because let me read you what it says on here. Okay. The NCIC system, okay, which is run by the FBI, that's all, wants, warrants, all that through the country, okay, they run that system, okay. It, tell, it told Officer uh, Melissa Sylvester this from the Bangor Police. It said, you are not permitted to disseminate pictures from this system unless, here you go, sports fans, the individual has an active arrest warrant. Yeah, so he did have an active arrest warrant. That's what the feds are trying to cover up. That's what the FBI... You see, the FBI is in charge of damage control when the marshals screw up, the ATF screws up, Secret Service screws up. They call the FBI because they're the ones that work right underneath the DOJ and they try to figure a way to, to smooth it over. But that's really what happens. We've, we've been having our tail pulled for two years. This whole thing with Jarrett Whitmire, the supervisor of the Allentown FBI doing an investigation on Lahowski to arrest him for, for an altered tape and all this stuff. Now, this is all going to fall by the, by the wayside. That was a ruse. The whole thing's been a ruse. In fact, they've had an investigation on us because we've been putting out public information on our First Amendment, okay, freedom of the press, okay? We're a news agency, Sean Christie, political prisoner. We are a news agency, Sean Christie, political prisoner, news, okay? And they're upset because we're exposing people. We're exposing who they are because everybody should be transparent in the United States. 
And I, I really think these people, the, the, the people that are doing this, their neighbors should know who they're living next to. I think all, all their stuff should be public information. Now, no, no clandestine Russia, no clandestine China. No, you know what? Public information is public information. If they don't want it out there, pull it back. But they're happy enough to go on Facebook, so implied consent all you want. That's, that's just boo-hoo. Okay? Understand? So, see, that's what was really going on with this. They're trying to cover this up. That's why you haven't seen the Mayor Holly video in the news. That's why you haven't seen it. You would think the first day it happened, my God, the only news service that carried it was the standard speaker here at the local newspaper. You'd think this would have went viral. My God, a guy goes up and he's allegedly accused of going up and swinging a stick and aggravatingly assaulting a mayor? you think this would have been all over the 5 o'clock news. They had an Amber Alert out here. They shut the town down. They went crazy. They were pulling out tractors and, and snow plows to block things off. They, 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 they put this up big time. So why didn't you make the news? That's why I didn't make the news. Why are there two other missing camera views? The Hancock camera view from the borough building and Lot 2 camera. You know what? That's going to show a lot of stuff once again. It's going to show the McAdoo police. McAdoo police had one assignment. They were to keep Sean in the area and in check until the two SUVs full of ATF and U.S. Marshals and a pickup truck got there. That was their job the whole day. Until people got there. They, all they had was the Dodge Charger there. And I can guarantee I know where Nick Hanovic was. He was, he was in the borough building. So I bet you all that feed disappeared too. All the cameras inside and everything like that. Yeah. So I'm sure all that disappeared. So that's the real story, sports fans. That's what's really happening out here. Federal cover-up. That's right. The Holly fight was really, it was really an undercover sting operation to arrest Sean Christie. And the fight wasn't even really supposed to happen. They probably didn't think the mayor would go off half-cocked. They didn't know our mayor too well. And he did. And two boys had a fight in a parking lot. So when do you see all this for two guys? Three years of hell and high water and tons of federal money. When do you see all this for two guys that had it in a parking lot? Hell, even in the Commonwealth statutes, they don't have any type of statute whatsoever. If you get in a fight with a mayor or a council person, it's unlike a policeman or any other kind of government worker. Heck, you could, you could have a parking um, uh, uh, meet made and get in a fight with her and end up in five years in jail. But with a mayor and a council person in the Commonwealth, how people fight with them all the time. So that's really why you're not seeing this. This is federal cover-up to the max. This is a huge U.S. Marshal screw-up, okay? Huge, huge. U.S. Marshals screw up. Yeah, they said they had the state police out here in Rush Township and, and Klein Township and all that. God, I had the chief patrillo of the Klein Township police when I asked him, did you see that video? He said, well, well, I only watched half of it. So I guess he stopped watching the other half where the mayor went ballistic for two minutes and nine seconds assaulting Sean. You know, that's the one thing in the Commonwealth, whether you're accused or not, whether you're guilty or not of attacking somebody, that other person can't come and attack you back, okay? They get charged, too. <laughs> well, you know, whatever you want to believe, we don't believe Sean, Sean even was. We believe Holly still came out and charged the truck um, or charged it Sean. He came out of that truck charging. Uh, you can watch the video. We have a new video up there. You can see Sean's moving backwards the whole time. A lot of people like don't like to attack when they're moving backwards. He's just trying to fend off an assault. That's the way we see it here. So that's the big breaking news. Nobody wants to put that in discovery, so I'm putting it into discovery today. And uh, I'll put this uh, NCIC, stu or NCIC stuff up from the FBI. This is really interesting. But like I said, proof is in the pudding. They had an arrest warrant for Sean. It was put in on the 13th. It was approved by, by DA uh, uh, Joe Morganelli, uh, or John Morganelli, I'm sorry, uh, down in Northampton County. Um, it was approved. Uh, they put a plan together. They, they used the blizzard. Crafty marshals. Don't plow the streets. Yeah, that really worked well. Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you, these guys ought to be sent away for psychovals. 
I mean, that's, that's just incredible what these people get away with. I mean, the U.S. Marshals would inform a town that they're not allowed to plow roads because they, they, they have a fugitive recovery operation and, and, and put senior citizens in danger? These are, these are jackboot thugs. They're psychotic. They think they're still in the Middle East. They're, they're, they're pumped up on, 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 on pure creatine and, and testosterone. They're, they're, they're just gone. I mean, these people are just gone on power. So, uh, pretty interesting stuff. And uh, just a side note that uh, the arrest warrant for Banger popped up again. Guess when? When Stephen, or Stephen Beyer, our magistrate judge, Judge Beyer, down in Tamaqua, on April 18, 2017, released Sean from Schuylkill County Prison. Because he said that the aggravated assault charges don't apply. Mayor Holly left the truck. So there was no fear of self-bodily injury. So the judge, in a good decision, said there's no fear of self-bodily injury. So I'm letting Mr. Christie out on $50,000 unsecured. All of a sudden, the warrant popped up again from Bangor, Northampton County. This time it was April 12th. And nobody at the prison told Sean. All they told him is he had an arraignment coming up uh, with Northampton. But they wouldn't put the arrest warrant out. Now we know why they wouldn't put the arrest warrant out. Because it's not the original. They got rid of the original for what happened up at McAdoo. For the McAdoo mayor screwing up. And, and, and I just have to really thank him for screwing up. Because if he didn't, I can only imagine what would have happened. When they put a bullet in Sean to shut him up. You know, with these people, like I said, they're gone. Real gone. That's the police state we live in. So, uh, basically, that warrant came out again for Bangor. Uh, it was April 12th. Sean was released for two days. Uh, he was actually picked up at, at the home here. Actually, uh, they wanted him to come down to the arraignment so he could be arrested in Northampton. He couldn't. Uh, his mom couldn't get down, take the day off. Uh, so officer Tony DiVergiulio, who we absolutely love here in McAdoo, great guy. He actually did the arrest. Uh, they wanted him to transport, uh, uh, Sean all the way to Northampton to Bangor. And, uh, I will love his immortal statement that lady, he told, he told judge, uh, Zito, Elisa Zito this. He said, lady, I am not prisoner transport." And you know what? I have so much respect for Officer Di Virgilio for that. Uh, he knew the whole thing was as legal as hell, but you know what? He treated Sean with kindness. He's a good man. And uh, we just thank him for, for all the times he's, he's really been good with Sean. And blessings for him and his family. Uh, just, uh, I don't want to get long-winded on this, but that's the big news. <sighs> Former McAdoo Mayor Stephen Holly, McAdoo Police... Officers Frederick, Frederick J. Lahowski and uh, Joe David were working with the U.S. Marshals, uh, Nick Hanavig in charge, and the ATF, and other local and state agencies for an arrest warrant for Sean Christie coming out of Bangor, Northampton. We give you the news first. Remember, Sean Christie, political prisoner news, okay? Number one news that law enforcement follows to get the truth, and so did the rest of you. Take care. We'll have some more facts up. Keep praying for Sean. Thanks for all the love on his birthday. We felt that. He felt that. We love you so much. And uh, more and more people coming out now. Just come out. Make a stand. We love you all. From Sean Christie, Political Prisoner News, this is Craig Christie. God bless and have a great day.